Hello everyone, my name is Robert Hugh Morgan. I'm the university organist at Stanford University and I'm delighted to welcome you to this week's lunchtime recital. For the next few weeks, I'd like to present a series of works by Johann Sebastian Bach, which were written during his tenure in Weimar. Bach lived in the city of Weimar at two different times. In 1703, he was appointed for six months by the Duke Johann Ernst III as a violinist in the Ducal Orchestra. Then five years later, he returned there with his then pregnant wife, Maria Barbara. This is where Bach's first six children were born, including his most famous sons, Wilhelm Friedemann and Carl Philipp Emanuel. Now, for the first time, Bach had a trained orchestra at his disposal. And so during this time, he composed over 30 cantatas, early versions of the Brandenburg concertos, a large part of the many organ works that he had begun in his previous situation in Arnstadt, along with early versions of his partitas for solo violin, an extraordinarily productive time for him. Beginning in Arnstadt and continuing in Weimar, Bach studied many other works by other composers, including some from France and some from Italy. However, we don't know the circumstances in which he first came across some of these composers. So it is with the opening work today, The Fugue on a Theme by Arcangelo Corelli. Corelli's Sonata da Chiesa, Opus 3, Number 4, a trio sonata, was published in 1689. And at some point, a copy made its way to Weimar. Obviously, the second movement of this sonata, with its imitative entries, made a huge impression on Bach. So he took Corelli's original and turned it into a fully formed fugue. So it's not a direct arrangement for organ of Corelli's original, but rather Bach's thoughts on it. You know, while he takes advantage of the potential behind Corelli's original. To follow, Bach's Canzona in D minor. Again, this is Bach being influenced by an Italian composer. This time we can see the influence of the keyboard canzonas of Girolamo Frescobaldi. The imitative entries, along with the longer note values, certainly demonstrate Bach's knowledge of the Italian stile antico, the old style of composition. This work falls into two sections. The second section is a triple time variant of the music that you first hear at the beginning. Now, that it was in Weimar that Bach started to fully develop the concept of a prelude and fugue as a matching pair. As I've mentioned in the past, there are times when such pairings might seem somewhat mismatched, but sometimes serendipity can result in a really good match, even if the two weren't originally designed as a pair. Such is the case with the D major prelude and fugue, with which I'll conclude. The fugue here is an expansion and a reworking of a fugue that is generally considered to have been written earlier. So maybe it was the case that Bach revisited this old fugue at some point and then decided to maybe write a prelude to go with it. Of course, we'll never know, but it certainly is an intriguing thought. The prelude begins terrifyingly with a 16th note scale as a solo in the pedals. It really is one of the scariest moments in all of organ literature. Now, what's interesting about this prelude is the fact that it is in many different sections. This puts it squarely in the realm of being a work that was influenced by his teacher, Buxtehude, or by Nicholas Bruns or any other composers who are of that older generation. It also contains some gestures that might be considered as being somewhat Italian. -ed. So all in all, it carries, it has the fingerprints of being a piece from his Weimar period. The fugue is a tremendous non-stop rush of 16th note motion. The ending is particularly wonderful. It's a long pedal solo, which rises and rises right from the bottom of the pedal board up two octaves to the top. And then the work finishes with two descending octaves in the pedals. As the great Bach scholar Peter Williams put it, quote, no other fugue in the repertoire ends so succinctly 
and with such an exclamation, unquote. All of what you'll be hearing in these recitals are performances which were recorded at Memorial Church over the years, some of them at Sunday services, some of them at concerts. So if you hear background noise, that's why. I do hope that you will enjoy listening to these works and I hope you'll turn in over the next few weeks to hear more of this series. Thanks for listening. Be well, take care and stay healthy.